now, from the one to turn to for news, Wendy Rutledge, Bob Nichols, Sports with Dan Oliver, and John Matthews, this area's most trusted meteorologist. Live from the WPEC newsroom, this is Eyewitness News at 5.30. Animal rights activists go for blood to make their point. Good evening, everybody. Things were getting a little hairy today on Palm Beach as protesters descended on swanky Worth Avenue. The animal rights activists were nothing short of ferocious as they tried to convince people to stay away from fur coats this winter season. Eyewitness News, Eyewitness News reporter Eric Glasser was there, and he joins us live in the newsroom to tell us just how ferocious they got. Eric. Well, Wendy, they weren't exactly pelting people out there, if that's what you mean. But demonstrators were handing out plenty of information, trying to convince people that fur is one item they should not have on their holiday shopping list this year. Fur-Free Friday got off to a ghoulish start today as animal rights activists staged the Model of Cruelty fashion show. Now we know why women who wear fur walk with their noses up in the air. It's so that they can breathe over the stench of suffering and death. About 40 activists took their message to Posh Worth Avenue this afternoon, donning blood-splattered coats, carrying signs, and handing out literature. Their target? Saks Fifth Avenue. We pick Saks, this particular chain of stores, because not only do they sell fur, but they also promote fur through fur fashion shows. But managers from the Worth Avenue Saks, who came out to see what was going on, seemed a bit confused by the whole thing. According to them... We don't carry fur, so it's kind of interesting to have this outside our store. Regardless, the protest went on, sometimes with public support. No, I think they're right that the, the animals do suffer. And sometimes cold. without. Then you, you shouldn't eat meat because you're killing cows, and with the leather you're making shoes. And you, and you shouldn't kill chickens and make feather pillows and uh, eat eggs, and everything is, is ridiculous. Now meet Diana Berger. The self-proclaimed animal lover and Lake Worth business owner says she's got the solution to this mink madness. Diana recycles her coats. It's the last hurrah for, for Meg because we make boutiques out of them. We uh, make key rings and, and date books and uh, book covers and checkbooks and all kinds of accessories. Sounds like a good idea, right? Well, maybe not for everyone. Well, I, I generally support the concept of recycling. However, because fur is such a symbol in and of itself of unnecessary suffering and cruelty to animals, I think in this particular case we would rather not see those items be recycled and made into other cute little novelty type gifts. What animal right activists say they would like to see is basically an all-out end to the fur trade, but that seems unlikely. By the group's own estimates, some 20 million animals were killed last year to make fur clothing. Bob and Wendy, back to you. I'm interested, Eric, I mean, why here, within you know all this warm weather and everything, are there a lot of fur shoppers down here? Well, we do have the heat, but Worth Avenue also has a lot of money and a lot of people from up north who do wear fur coats, so I think the idea was to make any of those potential buyers think twice. All righty, Eric, thanks. Okay, Eric, thanks. Well, protesters who wanted to make a point decided this would be the best day to do it, considering it's the busiest shopping day of the year. Members of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom held a protest at the Palm Beach Mall today. They're urging parents not to buy their kids toys such as guns that would promote violence and death. The stores are full of violent toys, uh, guns and knives and tanks and, and electronic toys where blood drips. Uh, and children get the wrong idea. They get the idea that as soon as there's a conflict, shoot somebody, stab him, kill him. The group says parents should buy toys and books that stimulate kids and encourage them to be nonviolent. Another group decided to try the same thing today in Jacksonville. Members of the Black Issues Forum and the NAACP went door to door on the city's north side. They were trying to get parents to sign pledges for life to buy their children books instead of toy guns. One particular neighborhood was chosen to start the campaign because three children were killed in shootings there. The group hopes its efforts will put a big dent in the business toy gun makers do every year at Christmas time. Retailers on Worth Avenue don't seem too worried about the dents shopping malls could put in their bottom line this holiday season. The island's main retail drag was teeming with shoppers today, and unlike the malls, few, if any, of the stores have sale signs in the windows. Store owners say business is usually brisk this time of year and don't expect to uh, any big price slashes until after April. 
A would-be robber is in critical condition, and another is being hunted down after an armored car holdup this morning. Police say two men robbed a Wells Fargo truck outside a Winn-Dixie store in Tampa. One of the bandits went inside the store and allegedly took money from a guard. A second guard stayed in the truck and opened fire on the robber's accomplice in the getaway car. The driver was hit in the head, and he is in critical condition. The other robber dropped the two guns, the money, but he got away. Talk about getting cleaned out of house and home. A Tallahassee family returning from vacation found their house totally cleaned out by burglars. The crooks took everything they could get their hands on, including the stove. The crooks even stole all the food out of the refrigerator, as well as money and other valuables. Police say they probably would have taken the shelves out of the pantry if they hadn't been bolted down. A criminal investigation into the alleged baby swap involving Kimberly Mays could begin as early as Monday. Former nurse's aide Patsy Webb came forward this past week and claimed the 1978 swap of the two babies was intentional. An attorney for one of the doctors allegedly involved in the swap says he's not sure Webb's story is true. He says there are inconsistencies in her story. The attorney also pointed out that Webb's personal file noted she was forgetful, acted spaced out, and had a severe emotional problem. Webb claims she finally came forward to clear her conscience. A rough surf continues to erode our coastline away. In Martin County at Bathtub Beach, a public restroom is on the verge of falling into the sea. A lifeguard tower is also getting dangerously close to the ocean there. Storms out in the Atlantic and an east wind are causing all of this erosion. Well, a program to save some of our region's last natural areas has taken some heat. One group is worried about their town's sensitive lands and whether the county can manage them. Eyewitness News environmental reporter Chuck Weber has that story. Almost three years ago, Palm Beach County voters approved a $100 million bond issue. That money was to buy environmentally sensitive lands like this rare scrub habitat in Juneau Beach. My biggest concern is that it will be fenced off and just be a preserve. Juneau Beach Mayor Frank Harris says his town's always been behind the land buying effort, but... It's a concern that we do come up with a plan, a management plan, and it is well funded. The county says it has no plans to just fence off the land. Uh, many activities, many passive, non-consumptive, non-destructive type activities are certainly going to be allowed on these properties. The Juno Beach scrub covers some 500 acres. If it's all acquired, that would someday make up about half the town. The mayor envisions the sensitive land being part of a townwide system of pedestrian bicycle paths linking the scrub with the sea. This might even include the controversial closing of a section of A1A to vehicles. It seems like the town and the county want pretty much the same thing for this unique piece of property, but it also looks like the town really doesn't trust the county when it comes to how plans are carried out and when they're carried out. I hate to say that, but I, that's one of my concerns. Yes, we, we just have to move faster. The county says some land management money will come from the bond issue. But in several years, the county will have to find funds for long-term management of the environmentally sensitive lands. In Juno Beach, Chuck Weber, TV12 Eyewitness News. And Chuck says that at the uh, Juno Beach site, so far the county has acquired just less than a third of the 500 acres. They hope to buy the remaining acreage in the next year or so. Just ahead on Eyewitness News today, Limbaugh may be happy about the rush on his latest book, but wait until he finds out where some of the money is going. Skiers give thanks to Mother Nature. Now it's downhill all the way. They came from opposite ends of the political spectrum to band at the altar. It's November and our prices are falling at the Palm Beach's Dodge Giant. A Rigo Dodge. During our fall savings festival, drive away in a new 94 caravan. We're the caravan leader with prices starting at just $14,995. Get into a 93 Spirit for just $10,995. Or how about a 94 Shadow at 91 prices? A new 94 is just $178 a month. And don't forget, an Arrigo Dodge will pay off your trade no matter what you owe. Our prices have fallen and it's time to get up to Arrigo Dodge. Going on now, Byron's biggest and best after Thanksgiving half-price sale ever. Don't miss half-price savings. Half off every sweater for ladies, men, and kids. All Hanes fleece activewear for the family. All ladies pants and jeans. All Oshkosh for kids. Half off all Levi's jeans for men and boys. Plus 60% off 14 karat gold jewelry. Going on now, Byron's best half-price sale of the season. At Byron's. For the right gift at the right price. 
Remember, you're watching the one to turn to WPEC TV 12. People trust Eckerd Express Print 60 one hour photo processing with their most precious shots. So does John Lewis Salzburg, space shuttle photographer. Eckerd Express Print 60, including two rolls of film for the regular price of one. Accidents happen. But in Dodge Caravan, much of what happens next is already planned. In a side impact, it's designed to distribute the energy through the door's high-strength steel beams, body infrastructure, even the floor. All cars must have dynamic side impact protection and two standard airbags by 1998. For your sake, we planned ahead. See the new Dodge at your local Gold Star Dodge dealer today. As part of the Economics program, you always get two rolls of Kodak print film for the regular price of one with photo processing, which has already saved Eckerd customers over $13 million a year. Economics, it all adds up. You're watching WPEC Eyewitness News with Bob Nichols and Wendy Rutledge. The ceremony was private, but the public got a glimpse of a political odd couple shortly after they said their wedding vows. James Carville ran President Clinton's campaign, while Mary Madeline ran the campaign for then-President Bush. Yesterday, the two parked their politics and tied the knot in New Orleans. After the ceremony, the Olympia Brass Band led the wedding party through the French Quarter to a nearby restaurant. Among the 150 invited guests, Clinton aide George Stephanopoulos, television commentator Judy Woodruff, actor Timothy Hutton, and television and radio personality Rush Limbaugh. Well, weddings aren't all Rush Limbaugh is doing these days. The conservative talk show host is pushing his new book. And as Tony Russomano shows us, this ultra-conservative has ties to the left he doesn't even know about. He's big. Anti-liberal Rush Limbaugh is huge, even in ultra-liberal Santa Cruz. And that's just got some people in town in a ferocious snit. So when boxes of Rush's new book arrive for sale at Bookshop Santa Cruz, the store's owner and unabashed liberal town mayor, Neil Coonerty, thought baloney. Coonerty put the $23 book on sale for the price of an equivalent amount of real baloney, $8.40. The difference of $14.60 is added back onto the price, in the form of a contribution to the Santa Cruz AIDS Project and the National Organization for Women, making Rush Limbaugh a fundraiser for liberal causes. We're hoping to raise, you know, a few hundred dollars for each of the groups. Um, you know, we're not thrilled with selling thousands of copies of his books, <laughs> but at least we know that, uh, that these organizations are going to make more money than he does. Rush's fans say only a liberal would be stupid enough to set out in business to lose money. I just think it's funny that uh, Rush Limbaugh has gotten to so many people with his conservative views uh, that they would actually come out and make a statement like this and take a loss on their book to try to prove their point. The liberals in town say it's about time someone beat Rush at his own game of ridicule. I just think that he's so full of it, and, and I think that this is the best, most creative way to go about getting back at him. Limbaugh himself seems to love the controversy. Listen to what he says about Santa Cruz on the radio station that carries his talk show in town. Santa Cruz, California, a true haven for fuzzy thinking, ultra left wing liberals, spaced out, sparse bearded hippies and arrogant politicians with absolutely zero business sense. Tony Russomano for CBS News. That's gets an little, amazing gets a little brisk, concept, there. yeah. <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> well, John, the weekend is here. Please, please, please. I have something for everybody. That's what would wonderful. You like? I've got a potpourri. Well, potpourri. we'll just have some sunshine for golf weather tomorrow, please. He's got it. Thank and you. And some cool evenings. Uh, you've got that. There oh, we go. All right, night, though. All right. We've got our temperatures. will be going into the 50s beginning on Sunday night and Monday night. Woo. Tomorrow night, it'll be very warm, though. Here's the traveler's forecast. I'll talk about our weather coming up next.
Think you can't afford a new Jeep Cherokee? Think again, because this week, they're not 24000 not even 19 but loaded for this incredibly low price. With a 4-liter, 6-cylinder engine, automatic, power steering, power brakes, an AM-FM stereo, and air at no extra charge. So think of the fun, think of the savings, but think fast, because it's only for a limited time. See your Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. Are over this way, Irv. Oh, that's a computer that we bought at the warehouse store, Irv. Better. This one's better. Well, we kind of knew what we wanted. I could have used a little advice. Okay, we paid less. We, we paid more. Uh. Buy your new computer with confidence at Circuit City. Get this Packard Bell 486SX computer with monitor for just $849.97. I could have bought a better computer. For less? Circuit City. We've got your new computer right here. It's Levitt's Christmas kickoff sale with the hottest furniture bargains you've ever seen anywhere. And here's just one example. Imagine only $5.99 buys this handsome sofa and matching love seat. That's right, I did say both pieces. Or if you prefer, for only $5.99, you can purchase it as a two piece sectional. The choice is yours at Levitt's. But hurry in, this sale ends Monday. Don't miss it. You love it at Levitt's. If you're looking for a quality used car backed by a name that means quality, make the easy drive to JM Lexus now. Get this 88 Lincoln Continental for only $69.95, this 92 Geo Prism for just $79.95, and this 91 Mitsubishi Eclipse for just $99.95. And if you're not completely satisfied with your JM Lexus used car, return it within five days or 500 miles, damage free, and we'll exchange it for another of equal value, guaranteed. JM Lexus used cars in Margate. Meteorologist John Matthews Doppler 12 forecast is certified by the National Weather Association. Once again, we have forecast verification. I told you it was going to be a beautiful day today and uh, kind of on the breezy side. Lots of sunshine. We've had that right now, right over the TV station. It's no, no, no clouds at all in the sky. Fair skies there, but we do have some clouds around. And from time to time, we pick up a little light shower. They come off the ocean every once in a while, but really was a very nice day. Maybe a couple of quick showers around town, but no problem for everybody. Here's what's going on as far as temperatures. It's nice and mild at 77 at Vero Beach right now. 80 in Fort Pierce. 81 degrees in West Palm Beach and Boca Raton. And our humidity anywhere from 75 to about 80%. And certainly those winds off the Atlantic there. They're kicking up the seas mighty bad. So if you're doing any boating, forget it for a couple of days because those winds and seas combined are treacherous. High today in Vero Beach, 79, 81, Fort Pierce, 83 November degrees in West Palm Beach and Boca Raton. No doubt about it, those numbers very, very warm. And overnight, our numbers are all in the low 70s. No rainfall today, but we're on the plus side as we're getting close to the end of the month here. And uh, for the year, we're still on the plus side by more than four inches. Anyway, we might have a passing shower from time to time. We've popped those up on a radar composite. All these are just the little light showers that have occurred across the area today. And I'll show you a loop on that on our 6 o'clock report. But you can see here is a little line that almost looks like a frontal boundary. And it is indeed. This is all light shower activity across many areas in the south, but it turns into ice in parts of Illinois. Matter of fact, on the cloud cover picture, you would find that here's that classic comma shape of a strong low pressure area. A big winter storm, as you know, it's dumped as much as 20 inches of snow across parts of Minnesota and the, uh, the Dakotas, North Dakota, and it's kind of winding around the backside of its cool, dry air. And where do you think that air is coming? Why, it's coming to see us on Saturday night. But in the meantime, we'll talk about uh, what's happening in Dallas. You all saw the football game perhaps last night and or the playback of some of that with all the ice and snow. And the sun came out again today in Dallas, but so did the car pushers, I guess would be way to describe that and the slip sliders yeah. slip sliders car pushers and the uh, no goers no easy going in dallas today anyway tonight around here partly cloudy maybe a passing shower still a little bit breezy lows around 70. tomorrow partly cloudy warm and breezy a super day highs in the mid 80s maybe even 86 degrees 87 in some areas we have a cold front coming through Saturday night with clouds, and then we cool down in time for Wendy on Sunday. <laughs> All right, Johnny. Well, we want to get back to this snow subject here because oh. uh, it's boom time for skiers and resort owners in the Rockies. Take a look now at these snow-covered slopes out Copper Mountain Way in Colorado. 
A good strong front not only brought some very cold temps, but some very cherished snowfall at the ski resorts. Snow started accumulating in October to provide a very good base for the big dumps that have already fallen on the Rocky Mountains. Skiers and retailers praying the weather trend will continue. Whoosh. Looks like they're having fun. No kidding. A lot more coming up on Eyewitness News. A break in an annual tradition. There's a price tag on all this zaniness. And I'm Dan Oliver reporting live from Gainesville where FSU and the Gators are getting ready for a struggle. More on the rivalry when we come back. This holiday season, the real news is Eckerdnomics. Because Eckerd is lowering more prices than ever. Every week we're putting the 350 items you need most on sale. Just when you need them the most. Eckerdnomics. It all adds up for the holidays. A new benchmark for value in a luxury sedan. The 94 Park Avenue. Responsive 3800 engine. Dual airbags, dual zone climate control, anti-lock brakes, concert stereo, remote keyless entry, supple leather. Now you can have it all. Buick is Save $10,000 over Town Cower Continental at your Florida Buick dealers now. Watch. Don't blink. During Mervyn's holiday sale, you'll save on a whole store full of great gift ideas like these. There's more. You'll find something for everyone on your list. Interesting, huh? It's time for our holiday sale, so come to Mervyn's. See you there. Now through Sunday only. Get your keys. Go. The Ross After Thanksgiving Sale, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Don't be late. Another Eckerdnomics update. With every American greetings card you buy, up to four, Eckerd will give you the stamps to mail them free. That's value. That's Eckerdnomics. It all adds up for the holidays. Time now for sports, and it looks like the Sooners were corn husked. All oh, these college Is games are it? so exciting. They really are. More <laughs> exciting than the pros games. This year. At really times are. they are. Who's number one? You know, flip a coin. A lot of teams can lay claim to that title. Nebraska is number one in the coaches poll. They're undefeated in a win today against Oklahoma, and they play for national title here in Miami against either Florida State, West Virginia, or Notre Dame. After a frigid day in Nebraska, well, I can say the Cornhuskers juiced up about coming to South Florida, especially to play for national title. Oklahoma and Nebraska tied at seven and a half, but then the Cornhuskers come alive. Quarterback Tommy Frazier, the 11 yard pass to Abdul Muhammad for a score. Cornhuskers up 14 to seven. Oklahoma fumbles the ensuing kickoff, and Nebraska scores again on the next play. A 20 yard run by Kelvin Jones. The Cornhuskers win. And they do it pretty easy today, 21 to 7. Elsewhere, it's West Virginia right now leading Boston College in the third quarter. Earlier today, North Carolina, just like in basketball, 38-24 over the Dukies. Well, Bobby Bowden can't worry about a national title showdown with the Cornhuskers just yet. He asked the Gators to worry about. Dan Oliver joins us live from Gainesville, and I'm guessing, Dan, fans a little bit hyped up. Safe guess? They're getting there. They're working on it. Are you guys getting excited? Yeah, yeah I, I think they definitely are. You know, this is this has been such a heated rivalry over the years, but yet earlier this week in talking to the players, there has not been a lot of trash talk. Well, you always want to go out and beat Florida State every year. I mean, that's not even a revenge. You can beat them 10 years in a row, and the next year you still want to beat them worse. I mean, it's not a revenge thing. It's just a matter of going out there playing Florida State and just coming off with a win. They've always just had a hard-hitting defense, and, and it's not going to be any kind of exception this year. They're going to come in. They got the linebackers that can hit, the defensive backs that can cover, and then, of course, the defensive coordinators. I think, you know, it's going to be real, real tough for this fast break offense. Not exactly the words of hated rivals, but while there may be an absence of malice between the players, it appears to be alive and well among the fans. I don't think I can uh, say this on the air <laughs> when I think about gators. Were you aware that they are getting ready to hang a gator in effigy some 50 yards behind you? Now, what's your reaction to that? Tomorrow afternoon time when we win, 
I'm going to go down there and talk to him and tell him, I says, how soon are you leaving? <laughs> we can live with losing to Miami, but losing to the Gators, uh-uh, no way. How's this for technology? They're on the phone back to uh, Coral Springs. Their family's watching them on TV right now. Unbelievable. We will be back at 6 o'clock, and we will talk about the swamp. Rick, back to you. All right, I like how Dan has equal amount of Gators, equal amount of Seminoles, you know, fair play for everybody. In hockey, the Panthers are right where they want to be on the road. Florida fought hard, but managed only one win in five games during a homestand at Miami Arena the last two weeks. They could hit themselves for that. Today against the Bruins, Panther Paul Loss scores his first NHL goal, beating Bruin goalie John Blue. Florida led 2-1, to one, but Boston ties it in the third period. And then with 21 seconds left in the game, Glenn Wesley scores the game winner. The Bruins win 3-2. to two. And Dan, of course, a big Florida State fan. I think he's playing it fairly objective. <laughs> yeah, I can tell he hardly cared about that. Un until tomorrow. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, All right, Rick. Rick. Thanks a lot. Well, it used to be free to watch the annual Duda Parade in California. But no more. The Duda Parade has become rather popular over the last decade. It was started 15 years ago as a spoof on the ornate and glamorous Tournament of Roses Parade. The last couple of years, though, things have gotten a bit out of hand with unruly spectators spitting and throwing things at all the people in the parade. So tomorrow, it will cost $10 to view the Duda, and it will be limited to the first 5,000 people who show up. Wild. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. All right, coming up next on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock, voters ignore the warnings about rough seas and pay the price. The threat of a nationwide ban ignites sales of assault weapons and ammunition. And plumbing problems lead to a gruesome discovery for a South Florida family. Those stories and a lot more coming your way on Eyewitness News at 6. We hope you have a great weekend, everyone. See you on Monday.